Good morning. A Merry Christmas to you. A blessed day that we can gather in God's house on this, uh, on this uh, holy day of celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So it's, uh, um, I've, I've mentioned this before, I know, during a previous Sunday, but uh, um, uh, if you want to move forward a little bit and uh, be non-Lutheran on this uh, very holy day, and uh, uh, you can, you don't have to, but uh, uh, I'm just trying to encourage our, our intimacy here a little bit. But uh, uh, we do not have slides, so please make sure you have a bulletin, um, a worship folder to follow along with. And um, why don't we greet those folks around us as we're uh, preparing for worship today? I always felt like that Christmas morning, the service should be uh, um, more, you know, as, a, as, a, as, as what we are, which is a family of God, and that it should be a more familiar uh, environment. And so uh, anyway, uh, we will uh, um, begin with our candle lighting song, and then um, we will continue on with our opening hymn.
by his kind service now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you. confession I by virtue of my office is called an ordinary servant of the word announce the grace of God unto all of you and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. Amen. and the Lord be with you Amen. and let us pray Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 62. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up a signal over the peoples. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is in him and his recompense before him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord and you shall be called out a city not forsaken. This is the word of the Lord. Be Psalm 98 is read responsibly. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of his He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all right, earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with a lyre, with a lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the king of the world. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers of the land. Before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with the equity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Second reading is from Titus chapter 3. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. The angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he has pleased. When the angels went away from them in heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. When they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. All who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our next song.
let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord my God. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father on this blessed Christmas day. Amen. If you want to follow along, we're going to read our Titus passage. Uh, it's uh, in your pew Bible there on page, uh, let's see, where are we? Titus 3, uh, so page 845, if you want to follow along in your pew Bible. So, you know, as you know, mentioned last night, we know this last Advent, this Advent season, we'll be looking at these four, four words, thank and praise and serve and obey, thanking God, praising God, serving God and obeying God. And so today, as yesterday and today as the, the wrap-up of, of this, as we, uh, um, you know, have kind of thinking about, of course, the birth of Jesus and, uh, and what that means, um, and then, um, but how we kind of carried it out practically during the Advent season, all right? And so today, we'll look at this Titus passage here. So uh, Titus 3, beginning of verse 4. Uh, but when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, we be poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Um, Titus here, of course, is, um, um, Paul, rather, is writing to Titus. He was a preacher. He was a young guy, and he was out ministering, and Paul was encouraging him, of course, to stay focused on the ministry that he was called to do. And uh, we also see this in Timothy, some similar uh, encouragements uh, to, to new pastors <clears throat> but I thought that uh, this text here, I thought was so very appropriate um, for today, um, looking at, uh, um, you know, this whole point, of course, about Jesus' birth. But, um, but when, uh, what does it say again? But let's see, verse uh, um, 4. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. When the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, well, we know that is, uh, of course, uh, Jesus' birth. It had been prophesied centuries before, okay? And uh, um, it's only going to be God's goodness and kindness and mercy that's coming, okay? He's not bringing with him anger and hatred and, and violent and, and whatever, okay? He's bringing kindness and mercy. And, uh, and then, of course, jumps right into, of course, Jesus coming. He is at verse seven, 5. He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. And, it, you know, I, I was kind of thinking about, well, we, a lot of places throughout Scripture, but, but Abraham in particular, and we see, you know, Abraham is referenced in the New Testament a number of times. And it says, you know, that uh, God counted Abraham righteous, not because Abraham was anything special. Remember, Abraham grew up in a pagan culture. Okay, he, they didn't know God. All they knew was worshiping idols. And, uh, um, and that was it. But God called him out of that, and he made him, uh, of course, the uh, father of many nations, all right? And the people, you know, that, that would be born to him and generations that would come after him. And so Paul, or Titus here, is, you know, kind of, you know, he's talking about this whole idea. It's not just Abraham, but, you know, then Paul talks about this in Romans where he says that, you know, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we still hated God, Christ died for us. And that just always sticks with me. It just really kind of punches me in the gut sometimes because I think that's so amazing. While I was hating God actively, then Jesus willingly died for me. He willingly died for you. But because of his goodness and mercy, his kindness, his grace, he saved us, not because of righteous things we have done, because, and I remember, you know, I can't think of all the examples that I've heard in the past, but, you know, what, what, uh, uh, what use does a broken nail have to, to, you know, hanging up a picture? Well, it's nothing. I throw it away, okay? Or a, or a board that's all splintered and got knots in it and everything. It's, I'm not, I'm not talented enough in woodwork, and so I wouldn't be able to say, oh, I can make something good out of it. I can't. I'd throw it away, Okay. Something, you know, a, a, a torn shirt or, a, or sho tennis shoes that are all, you know, falling apart. They're, they're useless, right? I mean, take shoes to a shoe repair guy and maybe they can fix them. But, okay, but they're generally just, it's broken. It's torn. It's destroyed. 
All right, it's useless. And I think, you know, the example I used last night about being all muddy and coming in on white carpet and, and it's, I mean, it's not the best example, but the point is that, you know, that's, I think that's sometimes how I think of when I'm approaching God, that I can look like that, like that muddy, you know, got mud on my shoes and I can filth all over my, my clothes and I stomp all over white carpeting and I sit down on a white furniture. And, uh, and that, that's, that to me is a visual of how I must look to God when I've sinned. Okay, that's just an external thing, obviously, okay. But that idea is, you know, it's, it's yucky, it's, you know, it's gross or it's broken. And, and so none of those things can provide anything good, okay? You need a straight nail, a brand new straight nail to hang the picture. You need a brand new white t-shirt that's not torn to wear. You need new tennis shoes to wear that won't get your feet wet or whatever, and those things in themselves is, is how that will work, okay? So we, of course, are like those bent nails or the torn T-shirt or the ripped shirt or the, the shoes that don't whatever. When we are, when we are outside of God, that's, that's what we're like. You know, Isaiah pictures that. He's like, you know, we're just like dirty rags that just need to be thrown away into the trash. And yet... Titus, or Paul reminding Titus, when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, when Jesus was born of flesh and blood, the same as we are, he saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. And then he goes on, Paul goes on to talk about the, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And we poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That's a, actually a text that's pulled out into the in catechism it's the, in the baptism section uh, about, uh, you know, Titus here, uh, um, or Paul rather here, talking about the, the, ten, the, the uh, baptism. What, how can water, baptismal water, do such great things? Certainly not just water, but the word of God in and with the water does these things along with the faith which trusts this word of God in the water. Because remember, if I pour water, go back here to the sacristy, I pull water out and I pour it into this baptismal sod, all I've done is I've distributed water someplace else, right? This, this, there's not a baptism going on here. But Scripture clearly teaches us that with God's word and uh, with that water, then that is a baptism because then the person who is being baptized should also believe in what's going on here and trust that what God is doing through that word, his word, and that water to wash him clean because of, of the sin in which he was born, which all of us are born. So, you know, if I use that example about me, you know, stomping it with muddy, muddy shoes on the white carpet and my clothes are all filthy, you know, my baptism is I get all cleaned up and I'm all beautiful now on the inside or outside, whatever. And now I'm, I'm, uh, um, now I've got beautiful, clean clothes and my hair's washed, everything's good and I'm good. And to me, that's a, that's kind of another visual of what's happening here with baptism. Okay. Is that, that Jesus is, that God is washing you through the water and his word cleansing you so that you will, that you will no longer be stuck no longer be useless. All of us who have sinned and fallen short of God's glory are useless outside of God, outside of Christ. He, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, generously. That's so amazing that God would just generously pour stuff out to us. He didn't just dribble a little bit from my this cup bottle is half full. He didn't say, well, when this is over, that's it. No more. No, he generously. Elsewhere we see in the Proverbs and in the Psalms how it, I think it's in the Psalms more. It's that, you know, where God just kind of talks about his love like a, like a well of water. That well just kind of overflows because it's just being so generous and giving and giving and giving. Giving for you for you and, and for all those around you, but giving for you generously. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So that having been justified by God's grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. So then once you've been cleaned and once you've been cleaned and washed, you know, 
you no longer or you know the muddy person tracking in on the white carpet but be through through the word of god and through the water and through baptism you have been washed clean and now you're beautiful and clean got on clean clothes and clean shoes and your hair has been calm now you're 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 all ready to go you felt smell fresh and clean You've been washed and given that, that new life because of what Christ has done for you. In the scriptures, it describes it more of like a white robe that is, that is covering all of that. Either way, it's a description of you're been made clean and holy because of Jesus. Because of God's goodness, mercy, and kindness, he was born on this day to come to save us from being thrown into the trash heap from being useless, pointless, giving us new life so that we can then move forward as, as what Paul says we are, that we have become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. On this day, when we celebrate that joy of the birth of Jesus and, and, uh, and open presence and spend time with family and all that joy that comes with it, but all of that, you know, will eventually kind of just settle down and all that. And, but the star, just like we see on the screens here, that star, that bright joy from Jesus will continue to shine all throughout your life. It is, it is there reminding you of what, that, that, that's Christ, that he's with us, that he has come to be with us so that we don't have to get thrown away to dis, disposed of like a filthy rag that we get that we are made whole and holy. And we have this assurance here, as Paul reminds Titus, that we have that assurance that when we die, we're going to go and be with Jesus when he, when we, in, in heaven for all eternity. So we can thank God on this Christmas day. And I pray that, that you can, you know, not just today, but you know, tomorrow and the next day and whenever everything, the, the, you know, the excitement of Christmas has died down and all that, you can continue to be reminded of that Jesus has come for you giving you eternal life. You are an heir having the hope of eternal life through the person and work of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds, found the one true faith of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please rise as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. So, stay right here. Descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our next song.
thanks that your son, the eternal word, has become flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Extend his praise into all the world, that with us many would come to hope in his steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy. Send forth men to publish your peace and publish your good news of happiness. Keep them faithful to declare your gracious reign in Christ. Bless the work of missionaries at home and abroad that all the ends of the earth may see your salvation. We therefore pray for Pastor Matt Harrison, our LCMS president, Pastor Alan Buss, our Northern Illinois district president, Pastor Carl Fay, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in our area. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, God, for all the men and women who serve on the various boards and committees of our congregation. We pray for the board of managers as they serve you by serving our congregation so that we can use all that you have given us to glorify you, build up our fellow church members. Bless the board of managers with your wisdom as they lead and guide us. Lord, in your mercy, send your spirit into our hearts, dear Lord, our souls and our minds so that we will desire to learn more about you each day by reading or listening to your holy word. Lord, in your mercy. As our families gather on this uh, in this uh, holy season, uh, give us patience that we may slow, be slow to judge and quick to forgive. Comfort the lonely with your presence and help us extend the welcome of our homes and the friendship of your grace. Make us mindful of these of those who are less fortunate. Celebrate this blessed feast in poverty and want, and teach us to be generous. Accept with all our offerings the living sacrifices of our bodies to your service and our voices in praise and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Your Son upholds the universe by the word of his power. Grant our nation to walk humbly before you. Bless our soldiers and all military servicemen and women who stand with us, uh, stand watch this day. Keep them in safety as they serve us and uphold their families while they are apart. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our federal, state, and local leaders, including President Biden, Vice President Harris, the men and women in the House of Representatives, the men and women in the Senate, the Supreme Court's justices, Illinois Governor Pritzker and as Plains Mayor Goskowski. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up to you our friends and our family members who are struggling with their health, uh, including uh, Mildred, uh, Susan, Ken, Walter, Marlene, Irene, Kathleen, <clears throat> Lynn, Liliana, uh, Jack, Phil and Susan, uh, Carol, Deb, and Shirley. Continue to heal these folks according to your will and remind them daily of your grace and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you, Lord, for all the people who have gone before us and are now resting in your presence. Keep us faithful with them until the day when you make all things new. For you live and reign with Christ and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will not be praying the Lord's Prayer together. We actually will be singing as our next song.
Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Be to God. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We'll close with our final song. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. I don't have any other announcements this morning except uh, that I pray that you have a blessed uh, day uh, celebrating the birth of Jesus and, and uh, um, maybe Santa brought you a lot of good things or, or maybe not. Uh, but either way, it'll be a blessed day. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.